to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the Light Rays Corporate Infographic from the Grey Corporate Infographic series. The last time we did something on this series, it was the Corporate Infographic chat box. So today we're looking at the Light Rays. All right, then we have our world from the last chat box tutorial. And since I went through it, that, that tutorial, how to do it, I won't go through it in this one. I'll leave a link in the description to that tutorial if you never saw it. So uh, my colors on my right hand side and my canvas right here is an odd number canvas about 3,300 by 1,800. Okay, let's get straight into it. I'm going to create a circle with my ellipse tool about here. About here is good and just going to hold control and shift to increase the scale incrementally but then i'm going to draw a bezier tool use a bezier tool with b and just cut this line right here so that it dissects the circle or bisects the circle and we're going to go to path and division with the two bezier and the circle selected and it's going to cut this into a shape right here. Because I've made this more say closer to the center but that's okay. All right and then we're just going to scale it down a little bit because it's a bit too big. And we're going to activate our dropper tool and select well, we don't have the dark blue right here we're just going to select this blue right here go to object and fill and stroke and we're just going to go into our RGB uh, into our hue saturation and lightness under our fill tab and we're going to bring this down to a darker blue right. then we're going to duplicate it Hold control, control and D, then go to edit and duplicate. And I'm just going to scale this down with control and shift and put it right about here. So that looks like the part of the element where the bulb would be inside of the lamp desk or the desk lamp, sorry. Good. Then we're going to activate the ellipse tool once more and create another circle. Holding control and shift to scale, lift it up slightly about here. Duplicate it with control and D. And we're going to scale in. Let's give this an orange color. But this yellow will do for now. And then we're just going to select this right here, this or a big one or the smaller one will do. Duplicate it. Control and D. Don't click it once more to activate the rotational handles, and we're just going to rotate it until we get it as horizontal as possible. Something that looks like this. And then we're going to bring it about here and scale it down. I think this size is about good. And we have the basis for our lampshade. So next. We're going to activate our Bezier tool. We want to draw a line from this semicircle, which is the base of our lamp, and to that circle, circular rotational point. And we are going to make this white. So we're going to hold Shift and select white right here. Good, and that will make the stroke white. Then we're going to go to our stroke style from the fill and stroke dialog box that we opened up earlier and we're going to make this a 0 0.8 you think you can go a bit further i think you can let's make it a 0 0.12 oh sorry 1.2 sorry okay then we're going to duplicate this put it over here and just going to duplicate Control and d and carry it across so that it's parallel to the other line Let's make it so that it kind of touches it in the middle. I think this is about good. 
Then we're gonna hit Control and G to group these together, or you can go to Object and Group. And we're going to bring this down, lower selection, and bring it down so that it goes underneath the base and the circular pivot. Good. Then we're going to duplicate this with Control and D. Click once more to activate the rotational handles, rotate them around. So it's about here. Let's try and get it so that it's sort of in the center of the element. Good. Then we're just going to double click this, this, and arm um, this group, and it's going to keep the group active, but it's going to allow us to edit each individual node individual object in the group we're going to hold sh shift and select the two lines and then we're going to just draw a box over these two end nodes and we're going to pull them up mm, I think pull up this a little bit more and carry it down and then we're just going to put this underneath the circular rotational element so let's click out again put it underneath the two and we have the basis for our lamp next we're going to duplicate this right here this piece here the bulb element that cut sticks protrudes on the back of the lamp and we're just going to rotate it with the rotational handles bring it in and we're going to increase the size slightly then we're going to activate our dropper tool with D, or you can go here and activate the dropper tool. Select this orange right here. Duplicate once more, bring it in. Select the outside one, and we're just going to activate dropper tool with D. And select this white. Good. Then, just going to drop this white underneath. Bring this orange in. And with our lampshade is all but complete. All we need to do now is add the outsides and then we move into the gradient. So we're gonna do the actual rays now. Carry this in slightly. I should have cut this into the center so now the rotational handle is a bit off, but I think this will be okay. Good. So next, we're going to duplicate this circle right here, Control and D. And we're going to hold Control and Shift and scale it up. But here is good. Yeah. So that the circle is about as large as the world behind. Good. Then we're going to go to our dropper tool. And we're going to hold Shift and we're going to click this orange color. We will make a stroke around the edge. Then we're going to come down here, left click, or right click, sorry, and remove fill so that we can see what we're doing. We can scale it in a bit. Then we're going to duplicate this Control and D and scaling once more, holding Control and Shift. Bring it a bit closer to the bulb right here. Good. And we want the circle to sort of center the bulb in the middle right here as best as it can so this looks good you can move it afterwards good and then we're going to select both of these circles that we created and we're going to go to path and difference and that will basically cut this circle within the larger circle so that if we were to color it now in the red, so to speak, we have a circle in the middle. Good. Next. Now that we have this circle next, we're just going to make it to white. And I'm going to remove the stroke. And we're going to create some wedges now. So we want the wedges to be to have the same anchor point or center po pivot point as our bulb right here so that when it rotates it rotates around the bulb easy as possible so we're going to go to our snap tool 
and we want to make sure that I snap items rotational center and snap center of objects and then we're going to create a bezier and you see the snap tool gives us an option to say snap to object rotational center and we're just going to draw the bezier down holding control to get a straight bezier Then we're going to select this circle right here and we're going to snap the rotational center. Oh, we're going to move the circle instead and make it snap to the rotational center so everything is even. Then we're going to duplicate this base here too. And oh, before we duplicate it, <coughs> click it once, click it twice you'll see the cross in the middle. We're gonna carry this cross, which is the rotational center of the bezier, all the way up. You know it's a bit hard to see on the black background, but I'm pulling it up. It's a cross shape. And we're gonna snap it to the cost node so that when we rotate it, it rotates along that pivot. And we're just going to duplicate with Control and D. Click one more to activate the rotational handles and rotate upwards. When you think you've got a good wedge, you can duplicate it once more and rotate upwards. Got a good wedge, duplicate it once more and rotate upwards. I think these look like good wedge shapes. So we're going here's a great opportunity to look at why the combine tool is actually very useful. Because in this situation, I can't use Union because if I use Unify on all of these and go to Path and Union, then you would notice that everything just disappears. And that's because Union doesn't work well with strokes. So if I press Control and Z. But I want all of them to be together in one collective form to cut this circle. So in this situation, combine is good. And this is where combine really shines. It works well for strokes. So if I go to path, and you can't use group also. So if I were to group this also, and go to path and division, I would have problems because group doesn't work well with Boolean modes. In fact, Boolean modes require that there is some no group collection and group just puts them all in one selective place and moves it as one object. <coughs> so in this situation, combine is the best option. So you go to combine in path and combine, and then you can select this circle here and go to path and division. And you'll see that it cuts the circles as we want them to. So I'll leave a link to the Boolean modes tutorial in the description also. But this is this is a great opportunity to show you where combine actually shines. For stroke grouping, it works really well. So we're going to delete that outer circle. And then we're just going to double click it. So click it once and then click it twice to get the rotational handles and the center or the pivot. I'm going to move the pivot up to connect to the rotational center. I'm gonna do the same for this one up top. And move it to the rotational center. And then we're just going to rotate it out a bit. Oh, we can take off snaps and rotate it out a little to get this. Okay, and we can take a look to see if these are as even as we would have want them to be. Um, they're not quite as even as I would have loved them to be, but it's okay. We can do we can delete this middle one. Just use this one out here because this one is good. So we're just gonna rotate it down a bit. And delete this one. I'm gonna rotate this one down a bit. Good. And that gives us our light rays. So for the next part, it's a bit out of 
sync with the world, so it's going to carry it down a bit. Then, they're not as long as I would have wanted them to be, but I think this is okay. You can all increase the size of them as well. Not feel no way about that. We're going to duplicate with Control and D. In fact, just yeah, I'll duplicate with Control and D. And then we are going to hold Shift and select the red just for the second so we can see the stroke. And we want the stroke to be about half of what it is now. So we're going to change it to five. Right. Then we're going to hold Shift, activate the dropper tool. And we're going to select this white here. And in the middle, we want it to be blue. So <coughs> you'll have something that looks like this, but we don't want this shape on top to be filled. We want the shape at the bottom to be filled. So we're just going to remove the blue, pull it out a little bit, select this white, press Control Z to bring it back. And I'm gonna select the blue. And then we're just going to fill in these with the respective colors. We want this one to be the orange and this one to be the red. And then we're just going to duplicate this stroke here, carry it across, duplicate it once more, control on the carry it across. And we don't really want two strokes, so this looks good. Everything here seems to be working fine. May want to increase this a bit a bit off all right great so now that we have our basic shape we can move into actually adding some really nice gradients to these things so it's going to scroll in reduce you I'm going to start with this orange and we're going to activate the gradient tool it's going to make it a linear gradient and pull out and then we're going to select this red and pull the red out a bit and that will give us our orange look but then we're just going to select this one this inner light bulb here activate the gradient tool again with G or you can go to gradient on the side we're going to make this linear too is this linear? in fact let's make this one radial just for a bit of added effect so you can select radial up here or elliptical gradient I'm just going to pull it out make sure the last node is selected select the orange come to this first node which is the square and you're going to pull up and make it slightly yellow good give us that light effect good then we're going to move on to the lampshade itself activate the gradient tool by pressing G pull it up with the radiant gradient I want this one to be radio as well and then we're going to look to see if we can add this color right here at the end with the dropper tool and let's lift it up it's a bit on the bright side of life just dragging it out until we get a comfortable gradient and then what we're going to do next is replicate this on that one too. Activate G. Hmm. So what just happened there? Yeah, that looks like a new tool from Inkscape. I can't seem to undo it though. Funny. Not sure what that tool is. I just have to duplicate and redo. Fancy that, a new tool from Inkscape. Some sort of grab. Oh, I'll take a look at it. It's not deformed this badly. So I won't question it. Sort of looks nice actually, but 
For the sake of the tutorial, let's go back to what it was. Okay. Um, we're gonna gradient this the same way too. So I'm gonna go to gradient and pull up. That's definitely a tool I'm going to investigate. Let's make this like great. And then you can pull this up slightly more. We're going to add gradients to this too. So for this red, get the gradient, pull it down, make sure it's linear. Double click to get a gradient stop. You have to be in the gradient tool to double click. And I'm just gonna increase the opacity a bit, bring it down slightly. And let's make this red a bit less red. Good. Apply also with the orange. And we're just gonna reverse it so it comes under. And increase the opacity on you. I'm gonna do the same with this orange, put it out. You can select this red and then just bring it to an orange, to a deep orange, and bring it in. And for the blue, I'm going to do the same. Let's bring it out. Select this blue down here and bring it in a bit. And you can even bring the saturation down a little. Okay, I think this looks about good. All right, for the last, we're going to add a lens flare. I think quite appropriate for this. Remove the stroke. I'm going to make the lens flare white. This has how many prongs or how many spokes? Nine spokes. I think that's okay. And then we're just going to draw get an ellipse and draw a ellipse right across the star and blur out about a five is good and then blur this out to about a 2.7 yeah I think that looks good set the two of them and group them with control and G or you can go to object and group okay the last part let's take a look I think we've done everything apart from add our nodes so I'm just gonna copy the nodes and the icons and there we pretty much have it our light corporate infographic or uh, light way light rays corporate infographic if you like this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more like of this tutorial you can leave a comment in the accompanying blog post I'd appreciate that appreciate that remember you can get your icons and the uh, font from the blog post that you choose so the blog post in the description so go out there and get your icons and get your colors and also get your get the free font because i only use free fonts and um in there you can use them to your heart's content. So yes, 
There it is. The corporate infogra infographic light rays. So until I see you again for another tutorial, get up and design a new door. Later.